Hello friends, hello gun lovers, welcome to my channel uh, again. Today um, I will be comparing two guns, uh, two pistols, actually two handguns. <coughs> one is going to be a revolver, one is going to be a pistol. <coughs> and uh, before I start showing them, before I start talking about it, I, I just want to mention what it is that you know I actually want to talk about about those two guns. What kind of comparison, what is the criteria? Uh, I'll be talking about uh, is it is it going to be the accuracy, uh, shooting in the range, personal protection, concealed carry, everyday carry, uh, general ergonomics, comfort, uh, shooting comfort, and and all that. So yeah, let's start uh, with those two guns. Uh, I will be comparing these two uh, handguns. Uh, this one is is six uh, R P two ninety six R P two ninety. And this one is uh, Smith & Wesson model 642, uh, no, air weight, very lightweight air weight. So I want to compare these two guns uh, today. So let's start. Uh, again, I'm going to pick a criteria and I'm going to kind of, you know, uh, draw those comparisons based on that criteria. So uh, first off, obviously both guns uh, are good options for concealed carry size-wise. Uh, very uh, good size for concealed carry. I've been actually uh, carrying six hour. I did carry this a lot on me as a personal, I mean, everyday carry or concealed carry. <coughs> this came with, with this holster originally. I mean, when I purchased the gun, it came with this, and you can see that it's a six hour uh, holster built for this one. And you know it's pretty com I'm pretty comfortable carrying wise. <coughs> so uh, look at this one also. Like it has uh, it came with. I didn't get it installed later on. So you can see that the uh, the laser <coughs> that it came with, which I don't actually really care about. I never use it. I didn't even get it sighted because I mean I didn't. Like I said, I don't use it. I don't care about it. I typically use the regular sights. <coughs> Uh, this one has it's shooting nine <coughs> parabellum, nine millimeters, and the original. This is the original uh, magazine. It's taken. It's taken seven rounds, and I bought also three other spares. And each spare has a capacity of six rounds. Sometimes I carry an extra mag or not. So uh, <coughs> this you can see that's a little bit of a kind of extended and. Typically, my pinky is just having a good support, as you see, you know, right on the extended mag. The, the spares are not like that. They, it, they don't have this the extended portion, so my pinky is kind of actually off the, off the edge. So, this is uh, sick. And I wanna, one thing I want to mention that is, is again, uh, talking about from the perspective of shooting in the range, uh, Needless to say, in compared to guns, <clears throat> such as for any kind of target shooting practice, I actually don't use these kinds of guns. For any kind of target shooting practice, I use uh, like a Ruger Mark II, uh, Caltech PMR30 shooting 22 Magnums, or my Ruger MK2 is shooting uh, 22 LRs. So obviously, a lot longer barrel. And a uh, lot lighter load, 22s, are basically making a lot more manageable and therefore, you know, acquiring much, much better accuracy. And needless to say, when you're doing a target shooting for fun, you just want to have a good accuracy, good results. So I do that to improve, kind of to work on my accuracy. All kinds of uh, aiming, uh, stance, uh, various different distances and all that stuff. Uh, these, on the other hand, obviously designed more for the personal uh, protection purposes. And again, I can't have as much fun because obviously my accuracy, I mean, it's me again personally, but I think it's a kind of a general situation that with a gun, which is two inch barrel, actually, this is 1.80 some inch, 1.83 or 84. I might be a little off with the numbers. As far as I remember, but it's definitely actually less than two inches. This is like 1.80 some, 1.84 inches. On the other hand, 
this gun. <clears throat> this is, look at this, this is three inch barrel. So now, shooting uh, both guns in a range, <clears throat> this gun it gave me uh, sometimes, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the slide was catching and, uh, you know, kind of bit in my, the, the back of my thumb. It did that a lot. Actually, because of that, I went ahead and bought uh, shooting gloves because uh, it, at one point, actually, I was in the range uh, and then there was, there was blood. And in fact, you know, the blood was kind of a little bit of it, you know, smeared. Uh, it's on like, you know, the wall or kind of counter on the range. And then the, uh, the range officer noticed that. And I remember what he did, what he shot it. And he said, you know, there is a blood in the range. Uh, you know, stop the activity. They did stop the activity. He said, are you okay? And all that. I said, I'm okay, no problem. And actually they brought me, a, you know, a little, little bandage uh, to cover because it was actually right at the back of my thumb, you know, uh, that was blood coming out uh, from the friction. So uh, I was having that kind of a little bit of a ergonomic wise, a problem with that. Uh, again, the accuracy in general, obviously I'm happy with six hours quality. And accuracy is obviously as good as the shooter also. I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm a very good shooter. Probably, you know, working on it, I'm kind of average, I would say. So, uh, not too bad. I'm happy with that one. But I, uh, particularly, I was actually shooting this uh, the other day. Was it like, you know, Saturday? I think so. So, yeah, a couple of days ago, I was shooting this. And... I noticed that, you know, when I was shooting this, I was also using another revolver, which I didn't bring here because I'm not actually using, talking about that. <clears throat> uh, that had a three inch barrel. My results at the same distance, and I was using 15 to 20 feet distance uh, to work on my, uh, kind of analyze my results and compare. So this was the difference between this and the three inch revolver, which is Taurus. I was using both are shooting 38 special by the way this is 38 special plus p my taurus is 38 special and uh there was a the difference was like a night a night and night and day i mean i had much better results with my taurus with three inch barrel revolver again versus this part of it is it's not i'm not saying this is a bad gun actually a lot of people you can find lots of reviews about this 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 particular gun the Smith & Wesson model 642 uh, as a very good, very good, uh, especially personal carry, personal protection, concealed carry type of a gun. Uh, the, the one of the reasons is, is uh, because of the fact that, you know, this is near, really not a whole lot of fun in the range, uh, I ended up back actually shooting less in compared to my other pistols and handguns, and uh, therefore, you know, uh, it definitely takes getting used to. So, uh, this one, the, I'm going to make sure that, you know, I'm going to get all the rounds out. <clears throat> Again, here is the uh, 30 Spatial. Uh, these are not plus P, though. Those are, these are regular 38 Spatials. So, making sure that it's empty. There you see, it's empty. So, uh, I want to talk about the, the uh, trigger pull weight. The trigger pull weight... Uh, comparable to my other Taurus is this is double action only as you see uh, about maybe 10 8 to 10 pounds about 10 pounds my Taurus uh, has 12 pound uh, pull weight uh, as no, you notice that you know this doesn't have an exposed hammer uh, it, it is inside <coughs> so this is double action only because I was using my tires also, both single action, double action, with single hand and double hand. All these combinations, single hand, double hand, double action, single action. This is double action only. So with this pull, at this weight, which is a very lightweight, the, uh, the barrel itself, that 1.8 inch barrel, and cylinder are steel. But the rest of the gun is not steel. It's, it's made out of... Uh, some alloys, so it is actually very lightweight. I think it's about 15 ounce. The weight is 15 ounce versus my Taurus is 25 uh, plus 
uh, let's say 25 empty, uh, 25 ounce. That 10 ounce difference, 10 ounce difference with an inch longer barrel made quite a bit of difference on my shooting a couple days ago. On the other hand, for as far as you know, carrying this for personal protection, it is it is really a very nice option, and because you know you can easily carry this in your pocket, it doesn't show, it doesn't print, there is no bulging, any any kind of visible bulging, any kind of uh, pockets like your your uh, your slacks, your jeans, your shorts, you can wear this. You know, let's say it's the summertime, all you have is a pair of shorts and a t-shirt, and you're wearing sandals then uh, you can still, you know, carry this easily concealed in your, in your pocket. Or you might prefer the different ways, depending on your uh, garment and attire, you might prefer different ways of carrying it. Uh, could be a holster, a kind of, I have a universal holster. Uh, it's, to me, it's a practical to use a kind of in-belt, universal holster style. Or you can get a specifically designed holster for this kind of gun, uh, or vest carry like this any kind of different kind of carry uh, styles and it's all personal you know obviously preference uh, but again you know as far as you know the carry size super practical super concealable and lots of people um, have good reviews on that one again my personal take on this one uh, it's nece it's not necessarily bad review or anything a bad comment or anything this is in overall very good quality high quality Smith & Wesson made gun very popular in its class snap nose uh, for the reasons that we, we've been just talk i've been just talking about the only thing is is uh that's not designed for target practice that's not designed for uh kind of shooting in you know accuracy working on it and doing lots of shooting and improving your accuracy work on it like a, that's that's my take i i use i use like i said you know uh uh 22 LRs or 22 magnums uh, on on different uh, longer barrel guns uh, to work on my uh, accuracy practice in the range. Again, comparing with this one, there is an inch. Again, this is this one is one inch uh, longer than that. Uh, a little heavier. This one is a little heavier. Uh, this I believe this is a close to maybe. Uh, 18, 19 ounce. This one is again 15. Uh, it, that definitely you, you can tell that difference. So uh, one other thing is is because of the fact that it is uh, it's lightweight and less than two inch barrel. When you're shooting this, when you're shooting this, uh, let's say let's say single hand, okay. So. Uh, you, you're gonna feel a strain on your wrist <clears throat> and again you know everybody's different and some people have you know the different hand size and different hand strength different grip strength different wrist forearm strength and overall ergonomics um, and I, I, I gotta be honest with you I mean I I've been doing you know all my life and you know, working out and weightlifting and all that I'm particularly uh, you know arm workouts and, and all that I've been very good so even with that uh, some kind of a, you know, that, that's not horrible. I mean, it's not too bad, but I was just feeling more so than many other guns. That's what I'm trying to say. Simply because the, 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 the battle length and overall weight uh, is making you that basically the felt recoil is much higher than, uh, than many other guns. On the other hand, revolver versus pistol. I know there are lots of tons of videos comparing revolvers versus pistols again comparing revolvers versus pistols and then uh, you know a lot of people are coming with different opinions and everything but if if you're watching out videos about those comparisons then you're gonna find you're gonna find something that you know all those you know things that people are saying listen to all of them and eventually you're gonna see that you know it's kind of converging into you know some common ground and uh, the comparisons between revolvers and pistols from various different perspectives and metrics and criteria home defense personal defense the kind of gun, uh, what type of gun uh, you should keep in your car on your person at home uh, all those things accuracy uh, draw and speed uh, you know rapid fire situation uh, those all those situations so 
this gun, I think by far, you know, has been a uh, good option by many, including a lot of police officers as a backup gun. Uh, and a lot of people for concealed daily, you know, everyday carry, <coughs> concealed carry weapon. This, in my opinion, the way I see this, the way I see this gun is, is in a personal protection situation, a lot of times, again, if you look at the statistics, those are, uh, you know, any police records, any statistics, any studies, there are lots of very detailed studies about those things, and this one is I'm talking about is the average distance in a situation like personal defense, in a situation like personal defense, average distance between the assailant and, let's say in this case, you. You are the one carrying a gun for personal protection. You're a law-abiding citizen. You have a right to carry your gun, and you're carrying your gun. You're exercising your constitutional rights. You have a uh, concealed carry permit, depending on the state. Some states you need to have that, some states you don't have to. Uh, and you're carrying a uh, gun like this for personal protection. In a lot of situations, I mean, what I'm saying in a lot, don't take me wrong. In a lot of situations where people were in a, in a kind of victim position, somebody's attacking you. Either somebody broke into your house, uh, broke into your car, uh, some kind of a, in a traffic situation, uh, you're in, in, a, in a store, in a, in a convenience store somewhere, you walk in at night in a parking lot, whatever. Imagine all these uh, typical different, uh, different environments where you can have uh, a situation like that. In a lot of those cases, the typical, the average distance between the victim and a salient is actually very close. It is not like in a range uh, 20 yards, 25 yards, 30, 40 yards. No, it's the average distance is very short. Uh, I think it's about uh, seven feet or eight feet or something like that. So on the yardage terms, approximately, what is it? Uh, nine, let's say nine feet is about uh, three yards. If you want to talk a metric system, one yard is approximately one meter, approximately. It's not exact, but no, approximately. So three or four meters in the metric system or three or four yards or maybe five yards uh, in the non-metric system or in feet terms, maybe seven or eight feet, maybe nine uh, less than 10 feet. That's that's the average distance between a sailing and you, or you as being law-abiding citizen and potential victim. So in that distance, a lot of things can happen, right? <clears throat> a lot of things can happen. So uh, this gun, in this situation, versus this, and assuming that, you know, people, <clears throat> there's a lot of arguments, and the never-ending arguments is, should I have, like, I have typical on my pistols, and I'll show you. I don't have a round in the, in the chamber. On my pistols, I, don't, I tend not to carry a round in the chamber. I know a lot of people would say, why? If you're carrying a gun for personal protection, a gun is on you, it is loaded, as you see, then why don't you... Keep a cham uh, keep a round in the chamber. I'm one of those people feeling more comfortable not carrying, not carrying a round in the chamber, unless I mean I, I know I'm going in a situation or something like that, you know, like you're aware you're kind of getting prepared, just to kind of carry it on a daily basis. I'm going to a restaurant with friends or whatever, uh, with my wife I'm out, you know I don't carry around. So if I was carrying this, and let's say you know. On my belt, on my side, on my hip. So you know, what do I do? <clears throat> I draw it, and then the first thing I have to do is rack the gun. Now there is a round in the chamber, right? There is one round in the chamber. I got total seven, so six left in the mag and one in the chamber. So it, look at this. That t takes time, right? Just to do this. After drawing, I got to rack the gun, you know? That is, depending on the situation, you may not be able to do that. You may not be, you may not have a chance to do that. On the other hand, with this, what they call is point and shoot. There is no other components 
nothing else to it. It's actually overall, the design is more simple, a lot more simpler than uh, pistol designs. Uh, there's not many you know, moving parts and components. It's just simple design, but 100% reliable design. 100% reliable. Uh, yes, you got five shots versus seven, or depending on what kind of pistol you're using. I mean, it could be 10, 13. I have uh, pistols with uh, 13, eight, I'm an 18 round capacity. In fact, my Caltech PMR has 30 round capacity, 22 max. Depending on what you're carrying, and like, can I carry that? It's not as easy, obviously. So, uh, do you really need, you know, uh, 18, 20, 18 plus or 13 plus uh, rounds uh, you know, for personal protection? Again, that's a personal opinion. Personal opinion. I mean, one can argue that if if there is a more than one assailant, then you know, five capacity, five rounds is not enough. Yes, that's correct. It may not be. I mean, it wouldn't be if there is one more than one assailant and both are armed. But if there is, let's say, what is a typical situation, again, when a person might face? Typically, one assailant with a knife or a gun. And the goal is making these five count, uh, rounds count. In my opinion, having five for personal protection with this kind of combination the concealed carry advantages is a fair amount of chance for you to protect yourself. You don't need uh, 20 rounds unless you're in a gunfight. So, if you look at again the statistics of various different situations from the, again the police records and research, it indicates that uh, that is a fair amount of number of rounds. The ones that you know that would require a lot more than that are very different situations. Like I said, some kind of a battle situation, some kind of a gunfight situation. But, you know, what are the uh, likelihood, what are the odds of a person staying in that kind of situation? It's really slim for a civilian. So, uh, for personal protection, again, it, it is a very, very good uh, choice overall, given all the ergonomics, the size, the RAM capacity, the quality, and everything. Uh, one other thing I was going to say is the grip, which this is the original grip that came with the gun. And it is possible that, you know, I have, maybe, you know, that's part of the reason why I was having a little bit of, a, I mean, much less than desired results actually with this. Uh, because I needed to have a better grip on this. And uh, I need to have an a little bit bigger uh, grip installed on it. I need to get that removed and put another one a little bigger so that way you know look at this again uh, I don't like this this pinky is hanging off it's loose so that's one thing that I might be you know working on it but other than that I mean it is really a beautiful gun beautiful good quality <clears throat> and again uh, keep in mind that uh, when you're shooting when you're, I'm just loading here now. When you're shooting revolver versus pistol, uh, which happened to me, you know, fair amount of times. That one happens if the if there's a malfunction. Then you're gonna stop. Okay, if you're in the range doing the target shooter, target shooting, <laughs> not a problem. I mean, you can stop and put this on the bench and get your little tool or whatever you have, uh, and then. You know, take this out, and then you know, making sure that, and keep in mind that I, you remember, I put a round in this. So there you go. I got that round out, and I put it back on the mag. Okay. So <clears throat> okay, get that out, and rack it, and then pull that malfunction, the bat round out. It can be various reasons why there is a malfunction. It could be uh, maybe a a feeding problem the feeding ramp the round didn't go through the feeding ramp well get stuck there or somehow there's a problem with the spring in the magazine although it's not as likely uh, somehow the, the round itself is a defective it can happen I mean it's it can happen so that's why it happened 
a lot of reasons you know my a lot of things can cause that that's fine you know you just uh, stop there and get that you know bet ran out and you continue but let's say this situation happened when you are under dress you're under dress because you're trying to protect yourself and and there's a malfunction with your pistol well you know I don't have to repeat that I don't say that you know uh, you're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to clean that situation, correct that situation, and continue your shooting. With this, any other revolver actually, you're not going to have that problem at all. Again, the accuracy is 100%. By all means, I am not downgrading pistols. I mean, there are many pistols, many pistols, and 6R is one of them that has high quality. For instance, with this, with my Glock, uh, I'm trying to remember a few others too. I mean, I don't remember what those particular brands I had bad feeds, but you know, depending on number of shoots, the shootings you're doing, I know pe some people had bad feeds with any type of pistol, with any type of pistol. I had uh, certain with certain pistols. Uh, again, you know, for instance, you know, when I was shooting 22s, 22 LRs, especially, depending on the type of uh, rounds I'm using, the brand. For instance, you know, I use CCs, and those those are good in quality, uh, 22 LRs. And then I don't have usually, I mean, very, very, very extremely low. I don't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't expect to have bad fees because of the low quality defective rounds. On the other hand, if I buy my 22 LRs in a bulk like those. You know, those, this size box come in thousand rounds on them. Uh, there are a lot higher chances because they're lower quality. The bulk, 1,000 rounds in it, lower quality. And I had a lot of those. I had a lot of bad feelings. And it's to the point that sometimes, that, you know, it was taking the whole fun out of it because I kept stopping and, you know, cleaning the malfunction around. Uh, the, this happened not only with my, let's say, Ruger uh, MK2 pistol, but it also happened with my Ruger. Uh, uh, rifle. Uh, when I it was it's also used in 22, and I use those extended, you know, magazines and 25 rounds is taken, and it was it's a bolt action, and so many times I remember, I had to force it, force it, force it, and get the or get the bat run out, uh, or just uh, stop there and re manually work on it to get the bat run. So uh, that that happens, but again. If this happens, if the bat round is it not happening here with revolving, it's possible. I mean, let's say you know one of these rounds, uh, these these uh, 38 special rounds, let's say it's defective, and you're shooting, you're pulling the trigger, and you pull it, and there is no discharge. The gun doesn't get discharged. All you hear is a click, as if there is no round in it. What do you do then? Don't worry about it. Keep pulling. Keep pulling the trigger. Next one is gonna shoot. Most likely. Almost 100%. I can guarantee that. Next one is going to shoot. You don't have to stop. So now, this with this kind of a convenience, or reliability, I should say, right? Reliability. In a dress kind of situation, where you have to defend yourself. You decided, to, you decided to, you made a decision. You decided to use your handgun, your legally owned and carrying, carried handgun, to protect your life or your loved one's life. You're not going to have that kind of problem like you would with a pistol. So, I don't want to be uh, perceived as if I am all for revolvers. Not at all. I have lots of pistols. I love them. And yes, like I said, I, was, I carry this a lot. And I think, you know, I will be, you know, I might be carrying <coughs> this or another revolver, along with this, it might change. And one particular principle that I have is, is uh, I don't want to constantly change the type of gun that I carry. I want to carry a gun, like I said, you know, my typical option has been this, again, uh, and can be like in the secondary option, maybe this. Uh, I don't want to carry a whole lot of different guns because I want to carry a gun where I 
uh, the, the, where I feel like, you know, more practiced, you know, like in those kinds of situations. You know, for instance, you know, uh, practicing draw practice with different garments and different situations. So uh, just to kind of psychologically getting used to carrying one particular gun. And then, you know, kind of a practice sometimes you draw, you're reaching your, um, whatever you're carrying, holster or vest or shoulder vest or shoulder holster or whatever. So uh, some maybe appendix carry, some type, maybe some carrying in back. Uh, whatever the type of carry you're comfortable with, you carry most that gun as your everyday carry. I mean, you might have a few different options. You don't have to be one gun. You can maybe two, three different options, maybe four. But again, uh, it, frequently changing it, I think, is not a good idea. Frequently changing the gun that you carry, it may not, to me, it may not sound like a, a good idea because you got to be uh, well practiced and accustomed to it, and you got to be real used to it. You got to be super comfortable with that, in case there is a situation that you need to use it to protect yourself your own life or your loved one's lives so yeah i mean this is this is why uh, i want to make this comparison and particularly wanted to um, mention the those those particular advantages of uh, of a revolver from reliability ergonomics uh, size of you know, from the concealed carry perspective and all that uh one other advantage i was going to say just the fact that you know this doesn't have a exposed uh, trigger, uh, sorry, exposed hammer, uh, is basically making the chances zero. The the kind of uh, getting stuck, uh, kind of snag. It doesn't get snag. You know when you say you know your garment, depending on what you're wearing, uh, the type of fabric, uh, sweatshirt, let's say, shirt, uh, say it's a plaid shirt and kind of a little bit of a cold weather jeans. Um, you name it, you know, there are layers and you need to pull and uh, or if you're if you're a woman, let's say you're carrying a revolver in your purse and especially for women in their purse, uh, there's there are um, lots of items, lots of items in their purses. So having a gun loosely placed in a purse with an exposed hammer is really not a good idea. Uh, those ladies uh, who have concealed carry permit, they buy their own separate, specially designed for carry kind of purse. Outside, it's a fashionable, nice design, all those, you know, uh, kind of designer looks and everything and brands, except inside, it is designed for this purpose. There is a section, there is a, a kind of a pocket in that purse where she can put this, and if there is a need, she can use it. But, you know, imagine that that's not the case. Uh, this lady, let's say, first time, put gun buyer, gun owner, and then she bought this, and putting it in a purse, and not this, I mean, a revolver with an exposed hammer, and put it in her, in her purse, uh, it's going to give a grief, you know, this, this exposed hammer. Or for guys, you know, if you're carrying in your again, you know, uh, on your in your belt, appendix carry, uh, whatever. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, that's another advantage of not having an exposed uh, hammer. Naturally, because of the design, it is double action only. It cannot be obviously there's no hammer to make a single action. So this double action only, and uh, so particularly, I repeat, for personal carry personal defense situations where you are in imminent danger, imminent danger, and there is absolute attempt on your uh, physical safety, your life, oh, and, and uh, you might be losing your life or say severely uh, injured, uh, being disabled, you know, to the point that you might get disabled or whatever, there is that kind of attack, uh, severe attack situations. Most of those, again, I repeat, according to research and statistics, uh, they do happen if they do happen. I mean, I'm not saying they happen frequently. Don't I don't want to be misunderstood here. If they do happen, the distance between the assailants and victim is about less than 10 feet. And this gun... I think more like a seven feet. 
and this gun in that distance makes a lot of difference whole lot of difference one other thing I was gonna tell you uh, then I you remember I mentioned that let's say you have this there's no round in the chamber you're trying to attempt you're trying to kind of draw it let's say somebody's coming at you with a knife there are also studies on that if the person drawn he, he is uh, I'm using the term he because you know, unfortunately most of these crimes are committed by males. So uh, he's basically holding a knife. And the distance that he has from you is, what is it? Um, I can't remember exact distance. Very close. It's maybe, let's say, five feet. Five feet. You're up close. Not really face to face, but you know, five feet. All right, say you have this on your hip, uh, and even the round in the chamber. Imagine that round in the chamber. <coughs> I want to make sure one more time as you speak, making sure that you know it's not there's no round in the chamber, like I told you that, right? Okay, there's round in the chamber. Imagine that it's in your hip, and you see the guy. Pull the knife on you, and he's charging. He's coming at you. You can tell the way he looks and his eyes and all the expressions and everything is the way he's moving. Man, he's coming at you with his knife. There is no, there is no doubt about it. You're gonna know that if you're in that situation. You're gonna know that he is not joking. He's not bluffing or whatever. He's coming at you, and the distance is five feet. The research indicates that. You don't have time to draw this. Even with a chamber, the round in the chamber, you don't have time to draw this, uh, point at him, and fire a gun. You don't have that time. The person with a knife in that distance can hit you with his knife, can strike you faster than this. Unless, of course, you were already pointing the, your gun at him. And then at that point, if he starts charging at you, yes, you can pull the trigger. You have that time. But you don't have the time to draw out at your hip and to protect your life. So, I don't know what happens. I don't know what you would do. I don't know what the recommendations are. You're a little bit of a SOL, you know. You're in that situation. A person is, you know, that close to you and already pull a knife and attacking you. Uh, you better try to do something uh, not to get stabbed and then if you can get into kind of a safer distance which is a little uh, longer distance just kind of give you enough time to draw your weapon and then shoot the guy i remember uh one of the companies i was working at you know we had we had uh safety security training and the particular focus of the training was uh, let's say in, in an environment, you imagine that you know you're in an office environment uh, that uh, would be kind of uh, exposed. So let's say you know some some employee, disgruntled employee, or whatever you know what they call a uh, post office effect. That kind of disgruntled employee uh, got fired or something. You know, some bone to pick with some uh, you know with the manager, or whatever, and you know he's showing up uh, in the office with his loaded gun or guns. And he's gonna basically wreak havoc. So imagine that kind of situation. So now, uh, in that environment, well, the, the idea was in an office environment. Typically, a lot of company, a lot of people, a lot of companies don't typically, you know, allow people, their employees, you know, bringing guns uh, to the to the work, right, to the office. So the uh, whole purpose of uh, this kind of training was. Assuming that no one has any gun, firearms, or anything like that, nothing to protect themselves, what kind of scenarios, uh, what kind of things they can plan on do in that environment to kind of reduce the risk, at least minimize or reduce the risk of being, you know, hurt or injured. That's different. Uh, but the reason why I'm saying is this: I remember hearing this from one of the officers, one of the experts that who was actually conducting this training session 
and which was very comprehensive, by the way, uh, was when it comes to defending yourself, yourself, your family, your house, your loved ones. It could be even a person uh, that you don't know. You're being a good Samaritan. It is also possible. You are engaged in a situation, in a kind of a deadly situation. Or you are you are engaged in a situation where you need to use a deadly force, firearm. You do not hesitate if you draw this and point at the person. Once you do this, your whole situation changed. It is very difficult, actually. And there's lots of debates and talk and videos and educational videos and programs about that. It is a matter of decision. You sh should you draw your gun or not? If you are 100% sure and certain that your life is in danger, absolute danger, it's a life-threatening situation, you make your decision to draw your gun. And you point at the assailant. At that point, there is absolutely no room for hesitation. I repeat, absolutely no room for hesitation. Any split, split millionth of a second of hesitation might cause you losing your life. Because you don't know what he can do, or most likely you would, what he's going to do, especially after seeing... You grab your gun, you drew it, you're pointing at it. At that point, there is no stopping. You're going to pull that trigger. You're going to empty whatever you have at this guy. There is no legal, and I'm, this is not a, I'm, I'm not talking legal aspect, I'm not a legal expert. Based on my personal research, let's say that you should only hit him once, one round, or two rounds, no. You just stop the guy, whatever it takes, whatever you shoot him, head, chest, torso is the best target, because the head is a lot harder, especially in that kind of situation, the, he's, everybody's moving and all that, you're all extremely stressed and everything, torso, target the torso, Empty your rounds on that guy. That's what it takes. If you're engaged in a situation, I repeat, where you need to defend yourself, your life, your family's life, your loved one's life, all that. And again, the dynamics of that situation where I just described the logistics of it, the, the, the distance, what he is doing, Knife or gun, firearm, or it could be a uh, uh, tire iron, it could be, you know, crowbar and all that, some kind of blunt object, he's charging at you, uh, it could be a big range, whatever, I mean, it's, it's that's enough, right, it doesn't have to be a firearm, it can be uh, a, a, a tire iron, it can be a big range, it can be some other blunt object that he's coming, he's close, he, you can tell he's, he's, he's not right, you can tell from his eyes, he, you know, and he is charging at you. And you have this. There is no need to, to hesitate. You are in that situation where you have to defend your life. And let's say you pull that gun, that's what you're going to do. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, that, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about. Make those comparisons between these two type of guns. As you see, both are good size. Subcompact, concealed carry type of gun. Uh, and and I just want to kind of give my personal thoughts and opinions and I'm not saying again one is better than the other I'm not saying that but there are uh, uh, criteria and factors to consider both as good option absolutely well all right thank you very much that's all I have um, I appreciate you uh, spare time uh, to to watch uh, my video talk to you later bye bye